Hey everyone, it's Ross. The following is an actual play of Castles and Crusades by Troll Lord Games. We welcome you to sit in with us. As with all of our actual plays, this isn't a performance. It's just a group of friends playing folk RPGs the way we do it. However, your table does it is the right way. Some audio and editing has been done for your enjoyment. We hope you enjoy the adventure. You have become lost. In a moment when a feeling of jealousy intersected, tripping on a limb under a moonlight, or as you laughed, a dewdrop fell from a nearby bow into your eyes. A moment or feeling of uncertainty. Whatever it was, you raise your head to find yourself in a vast wilderness. This is not where you were before. You have no way home. It is filled with monsters, ruins, and secrets. In time, you find the last vestige of civilization. Its inhabitants, mostly others, who've also become lost here in this wild place. Your talents were recognized. Now you are an adventurer of Perinval. It is up to you to defend and help the people of this dream world. To attain treasures, secrets, defeat the horrors that have lain dormant in the shadows until you awoke them with your arrival. These are the stories of that kingdom and its people, of heroes and of villains and of magic. Welcome to the Vale. In the day before days, the Allfather married the Grass Mother, and together they had the Shadow Child. And in those days, the Allfather's plans were not known. For an entire age, the Allfather made a place of beauty and serenity, and he gave this first age as a gift to his wife. But the Shadow Child delighted in change, and he saw the flaws in all things, and he sowed a doubt in his mother's mind, for he said that he had been wronged. For in the first age, he said, my father has given no gift to me, and I have no place in it. And the grass mother wept, and something became wrong with the tears, and they fell across time, and they were green. But they also had a, a pus, a uh, something wrong inside the greenness, and she knew evil. At times in the veil, the dark tears fall, and this is what is called the shadow of the green sky by the elves of that place. So. You have all, uh, as I said, been traveling to the Eastern Vale uh, on some mission of great importance for the kingdom of Perinval. And during your journey, you were cut off, uh, and it is as if uh, the forests east of the kingdom closed in around you, behind you, on your journey, and they became impassable. <laughs> and... Um, at some point in your journey, you top the rise uh, of, a, of a hill, and uh, the sky around you takes on a green, eerie tint. And it's something that it seems to follow you for, for days. The heavens are virtually bathed in shades of green. But um, after some time on your journey, you can see beneath you about 200 feet down the ridge line, uh, there's a group of people that you encounter. And they're all huddled beneath the walls and ruins of an old keep. They're bedraggled, worn looking. They have few belongings left. They seem extremely distressed. They're weeping children, a, a mad scramble of men and women desperately repairing the walls. Uh, it's obvious to you that this keep has not been in use in generations, but strangely, it's as if they're trying to keep something out. 
And in the distance, only maybe a mile or so away, is the pall pall of a uh, of smoke uh, that's hanging over what uh, is clearly the burning ruins of a village. Now, uh, you are all adventurers of Perinval, and you're bound by an oath. And so, though you're traveling on a, toward an adventure of great importance, uh, when you come among these desperate common folk, you come into an agreement with them. Um, and bound by this oath, you agree to help them. And they have said that they fled their village because it was uh, something happened to the elders. And um, the village was destroyed by some horrible monster. And so you have agreed to travel to that village and either slay the monster or bring back everyone alive who had barricaded themselves in and had, had not fled. And for this, they will give you the remaining coin of all their people, which is 100 gold. And in this world, 100 gold is like $100,000. It's quite a bit of money. So, before you depart on this, uh, this adventure to... Uh, to either slay this monster or help evacuate who remains. Um, what preparations would you like to make among these village folk? I will ask around and ask for more information both on the people who are supposed to bring back and the creature that uh, caused this trouble to begin with. Okay. <clears throat> um... So, as far as the people uh, to bring back, um, um, there is a, a, a woman you speak to, and, uh, and she, says, she says that uh, the biggest thing is that one of the village elders has remained behind. Uh, he refused to leave. Uh, and had tried to barricade the remain the, the survivors in the town hall. And the town hall isn't directly in the center of the village. Um, his name is Kale. And uh, she, she fears um, that uh, those that stayed behind with the elder Kale, she hopes that they are still alive, that they can't possibly have much time left for the monster that they had encountered. Now, she also tells you that um, one of the elders started to transform days ago when the skies turned green and that his face bled into a single eye and that his bones cracked and lengthened until he became some towering monster. And that was what first troubled the village. But when you ask around, everyone has different accounts of the monster that actually destroyed the village. Um, and some say the monster um, had multiple limbs as if a spider that it would use to strike and devour. Um, some say that it, uh, it used witchcraft and sorcery uh, to uh, muddle the minds of those that it would encounter and then it would, uh, and then it would devour them. Uh, others say that it was like a thing that had been uh, left behind in a barnyard like uh, the afterbirth of an animal. Uh, it was this disgusting pile of, uh, of, of uh, uh, an amalgam of, of flesh and rot. And so everybody seems to have these wild depictions of this thing that are all different. All right, what about... Um, what about uh, Kever? What do you do? Right, uh, right off, I would say this sounds like maybe it's an illusion that we're dealing with. Um, if everyone has a different interpretation of the events, um, so just keep, I would say let's keep that in mind going forward. Um, but uh, as far as the equipment, I'm I'm ready to go. Alrighty, uh, Tog, is there anything that you want to do among these village people before you leave? Um, uh, probably gonna just, uh, um, is it, so, uh, just gonna ask around, like, so, so he, they, they say that's, uh, town hall, and maybe there is, uh, who he wants, 
dog is gonna ask maybe there is like some kind of uh, other entrances into the, the like maybe there is underground like some kind of uh entrance into the town hall you know mm. maybe or something like that did anyone hear uh you you ask around for a while and no one seems to know of any other entrance there's no sewer uh there is a well in town but it is shallow and it leads nowhere uh, except into the into the rocky well water below in the cistern, and uh, but uh, a child speaks up a a a, um, uh, a precocious child uh, who is uh, his mother tries to keep him from speaking. He's like, I know a way into the town hall. I've seen. I've been there many times. Sometimes uh, with the town festivals. Uh, they string uh, strings of lights and banners across the buildings, and the town hall is two stories. And me and the lads, we will we'll shimmy across, and we make it into the t the second floor. And of course, his mother's like, St just stop, just let let them, let them do their job. Henry, oh. quiet. Yeah, Doug is gonna. Oh, uh, don't worry, just let let let, let the uh, child speak. Uh, it's, uh, you know, like those children usually know how to g get around. All right. Uh, all right. What about uh, Gladmood? I imagine Gladmood's there as well, and it's just like, uh, I don't understand why you don't. It doesn't make any sense to me why you'd have a building first off above ground, second off, not have a second way in that's below, that's not below the ground. I mean, if there's any, ever, ever any lesson that you should get off of any of this, you people, it's that you got to make tunnels. You start with the tunnels. And you <laughs> yes, just... that's what I mean. That's exactly what I mean. That's, that's right. exactly what I mean. And now what are we going to do? We're going to climb across a rope to, uh, off the ground like a, like a bird? Uh, I mean, uh, but, uh, I just... what I don't understand is the you say that some people are saying that this thing is... Uh, was was one of the elders that the bones cracked. I mean, is that the story that everyone's telling, or is that just part of? Is this is this being was, was were they an elder? Uh, among the uh, people near the child, where you overhear this conversation where, with Tog here, um, they sort of shrug and they look at each other, and uh, many of the people here say that the monster. Uh, must have been able to ignite things in fire for uh, something had ignited one of the buildings and the flames before the rains came leapt across from building to building and burned the village. And of course, it's only about a mile away. You can see the smoke uh, rising from the village. Uh, and many of them said, we never saw the monster. Uh, and, and another child uh, being willing to speak freely and use their imagination says that I heard that, I heard that the monster um, can, can can come can come under doors and in cracks in doors and in walls and it goes through pipes and windows and it would come in and eat everyone, and uh, of course the adults are just like horrified by this and they're like be quiet stop you know, uh, you know because uh, they're just using their imagination. But when you ask the adults, it does seem like they all have different accounts. Now, glad mood in the time that you have left, some of the uh, it seems like leaders of this band of refugees take you to the uh, ruined keep where they ask you to help um, help them understand how to fortify the uh, the underground uh, undercroft of the old keep. And so you're yeah, able I would, to, yeah. I would gladly help them do that with the time that we have left. Uh, all right, uh, Torgar, is there anything that you want to do among the refugees before you depart? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him uh, uh, who's man enough to come with us and, and slay the beast. <laughs> nice. All right. Mm. Uh, that is going to be um, a very difficult. It's going to be based on the monster. Uh, so it's going to be. Let me see here. It, I, I'm, I'm perfectly sure that one of the ch ch children, <laughs> yeah, I'm too, g g gonna agree to it. <laughs> yeah, right. that'd be awesome. All right. Uh, you, so, <clears throat> so you have to make a uh, a uh, challenge class twenty three uh, roll for charisma. 
to find people that are willing to go back and fight. Ooh, I don't think I can... Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. In fact, uh, they tell you, uh, you gain some more information this way because they, they tell you that um, uh, when they fled, so there's this account of this thing where the, its, its face devoured its eye and then it lengthened and turned into this massive monster and it had torn down buildings and smashed people and uh, some say that they saw their relatives die to this thing. Others say there was something that got in among the buildings. And the accounts of what it's like are different from person to person. Uh, but uh, some of the, vill the villagers stayed behind, which is what they're paying you to go either evacuate them or kill the monsters. But um, uh, in their flight, they say that uh, many others died, in fact. And they barely survived. And nearly uh, two-thirds of their village have perished, as far as they know. Of the 200 left, there were like 600 villagers initially in this uh, fairly wealthy uh, freehold. And um, so uh, they say that the river um, is perilous to cross. And that uh, they, they even saw... Uh, so there are two safe passages across the river. And uh, the overgrown path uh, that had long... There were rumors in town that you should never go to the overgrown place on the river. And they never allow their children to go there. But some decided to try to cross the river there. And uh, those people were never seen again. Hmm. All right. So... Um, Unless there are any other urgent preparations, uh, the time comes that if you are to try to save anyone that might be left in that place, that you'll have to you'll have to act now. All right. Yeah. I guess right. Suit up. <laughs> and, uh, yep. I guess. I guess we're ready. <clears throat> uh, other than the uh, the green painted skies, it is otherwise a beautiful fall day. And uh, the forests of this place have a, a, a gentle, when the leaves fall and things begin to, um, to change here, uh, it, it is especially green, never mind the skies. Uh, the lands of the Vale themselves are green. So where you might be used to an autumn where things sort of, uh, as they wilt in the autumn, they become a vibrant orange. Here they become shades of green. The whole thing makes a canvas of overwhelming green to the eye, both sky and ground, and falling leaves and floating uh, things of autumn. And uh, you come to the river, and uh, the river has a, um, uh, maybe I should scribble this. There's a, a I'll, I'll describe and scribble here. There's a, of course I'm going to use green. Bright green. So there's a, there's like a big waterfall, okay? And um, that area is impassable. If you were to try to go around the waterfall, it would probably take you several days of travel. And anyone who's being attacked by a monster, like you need to get there within the next couple of hours as sunset is coming now. Uh, otherwise, anything under threat, there's no way it would survive. Um, and then you have like the actual current of the, the river below the waterfall. And uh, it is very dangerous on either side. There's a lot of rapids, and near the waterfall is very rocky. Um, if you were to try to cross closer to the waterfall, uh, it could prove fatal because of the rocks and eddies and currents. Um, and then uh, the, the rapids continue. Um, there are two crossings. There's a main crossing, which you can see is open, uh, and beyond the treetops, you can hear a and the ground slightly shake as something moves. And then the shaking stops and you hear this low rhythmic grumbling like a like, you know, one at, just rhythmic and constant. And then uh, there is a overgrown area where you're not exactly able to see 
uh, but it's sort of like boggish and um, there are reeds sticking up and it's overgrown. You can tell that long ago in the days of the old kingdom, that path probably um, would have been one of the main road paths, but it's since become far overgrown. What do you do? I'd like to suggest we take the overgrown path across. Even though it might be more dangerous, it would uh, it would hide our uh, uh, egress. Yeah, uh, or or we can like if there is any any like um, maybe tree nearby, we can just you know like uh, cut it down and then make a crossing if if it's possible as well. That's that's possibility, I guess. Um, well, I'll go ahead. They people what they said there was an over a, a crossing where it was overgrown, but people took that route and never came back. I'm not sure if we want to do that, or maybe the thing that's been attacking the villages down there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes me curious. <clears throat> well, that's that's what you get when you know nature, water, everything. You know, like everything green. Why we're here. You know, we, you don't have this kind of problem underground. Yeah, I, mean, I think, I imagine I've got my, I'm sort of hunched under my, under my big blanket as well. And I think, I imagine for a dwarf that the sky is like this massive cave. Maybe he, he's complained about this. Like, it's like a ceiling's too high. It's too, it's, it's foreboding. It's just, it's got to be down lower. And I think whenever he's out, especially when it's daytime, he kind of is like, looks up like it's, uh, it, he doesn't like this kind of uh, being up like this. Yeah. Talk is going to come out. Why is everything green? I mean, it's, 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 it's better here for, for those blasted elves, for sure. Yeah. Blue skies and white clouds is bad enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's green. Everything. Jesus. Who is Jesus? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry about that. Talk. Anyway, no, that, that, uh, anyway. So, uh, and don't answer that. Short question. father. Short father. <laughs> short father. Short father. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we've got a couple of proposals here. One is that, like, all right, let's go. Let's chop down a tree and use it to actually, like, let's do some dwarven construction and overcome the power of the of the current as dwarves do by simply overcoming the physical world through wit and construction. Uh, another option that would be uh, to take the path that looks overgrown and untended uh, that cannot be seen fully from where you are. Um, so uh, what do you think, Torgar? I, I like the I like the idea of brute forcing the the crossing of the river. Okay, with the tree. Uh, what, what do you think, Om yes. or Inon? I think we should either cut down the tree or go through the um, untended patch. All right. One of you has an axe. Does anybody else? Who has the axe? I, I do. Have the axe. I have a hatchet. All right. Okay, so um, it's uh, let me compare it to the river. Let me look at it here. Um, all right. Uh, in order to do this within an amount of time, so you're going to start doing this, um, and uh, you're going to know pretty soon if, if the effort is futile or, or sun will set and you'll be within darkness and you'll have no hope. Of making it in time it's all a matter of can the dwarves uh and the, and the barbarian and others can you can you fail a tree fast enough for if you have a, a the right tree this will be easily overcome so um who has the axe it's a uh, torgar torgar um you will need to pass a um let me sorry i'll do the math again 23 it is a uh 23 challenge level check um, of strength. And actually, I will uh, reduce that to 20 because you have somebody with a hatchet and some dwarves. Would I be able to help push down the tree with my great strength? 
Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll lower it down to 20. Everybody's helping. You got, you know, dwarves. You've got uh, resourceful people. So, but Torgar will have to roll a 20. Or not roll a 20, but you have to meet or exceed a 20 on strength. Uh, 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 sorry, um, uh, 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 somebody's helping me with a hatchet. Uh, uh, what, what bonus do I get from that? So I just included it in the, in the challenge level. So, uh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. All right, then. Uh, uh, let's bring him down. Let's do it. A nat 20. Whoa. Uh, yeah. With with the uh, the strength and, and the talent, you all are like elite fighters. Uh, so you don't want to mess around. You want to get there fast. Uh, and with the dwarves, you're able to fell this thing within minutes. Just chat, 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 chat. And you, uh, within a few strikes, you see Torgar um, with like three strokes of his axe. He's able to to get this thing down to to be a whittle, and uh, and then. Um, Rin, and you're able to just push over the remains as it just tumbles over across the river. Now, let me make a check of my own. While you're doing that, I think Gladmoot is shouting at everybody, um, not doing anything except just saying, No, no, no! Not out of the way there! He's gonna fall the tree! Oh, you hit us the wrong way there! And he's just, just shouting at everyone, telling them what to do. And probably not giving useful information. All right. The, the tree falls, and you're absolutely certain that you can cross the rapids, uh, an otherwise impassable area of the river without problem. You cross over to the other side, um, and you can see that the, the burning village is just, just nearby. Uh, sunset has come, and it's beginning to get dark outside. Uh, if anyone is left alive, you probably only have moments. You, um, you smell... Uh, burning wood, uh, burning oil, um, the materials, the, the daub of house houses burning. You also smell something that's like burning meat. And then you hear on the other side of the river uh, that rhythmic, like that rhythmic, like rumbling sound. When the tree falls, it, it stops for a while and then it resumes. Uh yeah, Tuck, Tuck is gonna like. Do you hear it? Uh, it's uh. Don't you think it's kind of uh, maybe a giant or, or, or a nugger or something like that? Let's check it out then. Worth investigating. You're gonna go check out the noise. I think we should get to the village as soon as we can. Actually, or these people are all going to be dead. Yeah, I might let's well do. All right. Uh, is it on the way to the village, or is this like uh, kind of one or the other? Yeah, you would, it, it's down the river, so you went up to the oh. the falls, uh, away from where the it's where the crossing is, the main crossing. Oh. Um, well, our our first uh, first priority is to get these people right. It's getting dark, so. Well, uh, I was just wondering, I wanted to su uh, suggest that if it's a giant, you know, we we should somehow prepare. Uh, I'm just saying. Well, I know where your mind is, friend. Your mind is stealing whatever it's got. <laughs> and I do, I do like you, like your company. But sometimes I think your choices are flawed. To be honest. Indeed. Well, that's your opinion. Ah, uh, it is, and I'll share it whenever I feel it's. Valid. Gentlemen, it's gentlemen, we're not here to fight each other. We should get to the village as soon as possible. Indeed, we cannot let them starve to death in the dark. Come. All right, all right. So, um, it's uh, it's not hard. It's it's only uh, you know less than a mile away at this point. Uh, you can clearly see the village. This is a village that, um, before these events befell it, would have been uh, a sprawling, uh, free town uh, without an immediate lord that has succeeded in its marble mines and marble trade. These were a, uh, a people that were doing well. Now, uh, the pile of smoke hangs in the air and um, you stand uh, just before ruins of burnt buildings. Uh, dozens of these wrecks stand. Uh, 
Uh, some of them have already fallen in on themselves from the fire. Um, their naked walls are blackened and open to the skies. There are burnt beams at odd angles amongst the wreckage, windows gaping wide, revealing hollow interiors held together uh, by the silence of their own collapse. And among the small wisps of smoke that snake their way into the clear air above, you can see how hot and long the fires have burned. After the blackened husks, there is a lonely structure uh, that is in the town square. And perhaps it is because of this town square, the open ground between them, that it has been spared. It is only possible that that is the town hall. It is one of the last remaining structures in town that haven't burned from the flames leaping from building to building. It uh, looms down at you. It's two, it's two stories tall. And um, other than the core of this town, the rest of it has nearly completely burned down. Uh, you can hear strange groaning sounds coming from the town hall combined and echoing with the sounds of screams. <clears throat> People are in danger. Let's go. Yeah, there's no time to waste. You uh, you approach the town hall? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Straight ahead. I'm, yeah, I'm just, 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 you know, there is a suggestion, you know, how about we, maybe we just check it out first, maybe uh, climb up something tall and then see, see what's happening there. I mean, or just... Uh, you know, be uh, careful about it and uh, don't just rush into the danger. Uh, People are screaming, friend. People are... Can you not hear the noises? Could be a trap, though. Aye. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, nothing gonna help them if, if, if we're gonna end up dead. I'm just saying. Let's surround the building. That way, if it is a trap, we can... We can uh, prong attack our opponents. Well, if it's a trap, I'll be the one to spring it, and I'll just start marching. I have my, I pull up my morning star, and uh, touch my holy symbol, which is these two interlocking uh, rings, and um, look down at the earth and say, mumble something, and just start walking straight, straight ahead. You do what you need to. So let me make sure I under, understand the plan. Um, I think Ingrock may have died on me. <laughs> I think this will be the last time I get to use Ingrock, sadly. Uh, if your VTT dies, we're just going to switch to Theater of the Mind. So, um, I'll try to describe what you see. So, okay. I'm hearing that you are going to try to surround the building. Is that right? Uh, that was suggested. I think I'm I'm with uh, Gladmood. Um, I think I'm going to be, be on his uh, six and uh, and approach directly. Okay. So, it, it, it may Probably be that we're going... Oh, sorry. Ahead, you know, so it's probably not the smartest move. You know, pro there's probably a better, you know, but I think that the more direct thing to do right now is to get to the building and try to save these people. Right. And, but I also think it's cool if other people are like skirting around. That might be helpful that we all don't go the same way. Yeah, precisely. So sounds like. Um... Well, my, my way is going to be like, you know, uh, Trying to creep up like silently, you know, and and just you know, nobody notice me. Like I'm not, I'm 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 not just rushing into the danger like uh, like an idiot. Sorry about that. <laughs> so is it? It's glad mood and who else? Kever. Kever. Okay, so let me swap those out. Um, Nostromo, what are you doing? Um. I'll. I'll accompany uh, the person that goes uh, that goes first. Okay, gotcha. So I'll move you up there, and then um, all right. So you all are going straight up to the front door, um, and then it sounds like two of you are sneaking. Now, in case in Grok dies or the VTT or whatever, just I'll describe it. Uh, it's a two-story building. There's streamers and lines from an, from a previous celebration, as the child had mentioned, that are going from lower buildings nearby uh, across the open gaps. Uh, and then, of course, you have the left, you know, facing the front of the building. You can go to the left or the right. It's a fairly large, you know, 1,500, 
you know, 1,700 square foot building. So, uh, the two people sneaking, do you stay together or do you go to opposite sides? Or, you know, uh, starting with um, Om, what, what do you do? I mean, we, we can we can be together. All right. <clears throat> yes, I'll be. Uh, I've got my golden tongue, which is different from our warrior name with a similar name out, and I'll be approaching the front. And regrettably, the uh, the VTT has also uh, bunged up for me. That's okay. Yeah, I'm we'll trying to get back on, and it's not working. Yeah, you won't be able to. Yeah, so we'll just switch to theater of the mind. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. So you said um, that you, um, you were sneaking around the side of the building. Uh, no, no, I'm going uh, to the front door with him. Everybody's going to the front door, except, uh, all right, so what about Tog? And then you said you were going to try to sneak. Which way do you sneak? Left, right? Where do you go? I mean, I, I'm just going to be like, uh, Bab, um, I'm going to accompany everyone, but just, you know, behind. I'm not going to go, like, okay. you know, uh, close. I'm going to be just in, in the, like, hiding or something like that. Hidden, that is. Like, uh, gotcha. so I'm not just... Because it's, if if everyone just goes straight, you know, like why 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 sure. do? Sure. You... Yeah, you're confident yeah. that uh, you're hidden as well as you can be. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Kever and Gladmood, you approach the front door of the building. The windows are smashed in. Glass is shattered around you. Uh, this building doesn't look like it's experienced the flames that have leapt from building the building here. Um, but. Um, You've got two smashed windows and then a, a set of double doors. They're very finely wrought. Uh, they're very finely made. An expert craftsman uh, made these, uh, these doors. They have like pretty like patterns and stuff that have been carved into it and they look very old. Uh, they are closed. So you've got two smashed windows in the front of the building and a set of double doors. Um, glad mood, what do you do? Um, so we've crossed the space between the, where we've, we're right in front of the building now. Yeah. First off, I, I'm looking side to side. Is there any sign of anything? Um, oh, looks like somebody opened the door. Here, I'm going to close the door. Let me actually lock <laughs> Sorry it. about that. That's okay. I'm going to lock these doors. I'm sorry, Jay. I'm gonna, Go ahead. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll walk up to one of the smash windows and say, hello. Okay. Hello, rescuers come. Is everyone all right? All right, uh, you walk up to the window. I'm definitely keeping an eye to the sides as well. Like there's, there's something wandering around this village somewhere that might come, maybe the thing that we heard breathing back there. So um, I feel like the enemy is in the village and not in the building. We got to move. Let's see. Okay. Um, make a uh, wisdom save as you look into the into the window. Now, every the rest of you see uh, Gladmood appear into the window and say these things. Okay, so I rolled a six plus uh, six for wisdom. That's a twelve plus three, so that's a fifteen. So I failed. All right. Um, uh, something seizes Gladmood. Uh, ah! And uh, all of a sudden, um, you see him uh, just freeze in place, stunned, as if he's frozen, glaring, his eyes unusually wide open, like, and then just looking into the window. After he does that, uh, what do you what do you do when you see this? Uh, I gotta write your names down now that I don't have the UTT to reference. So I got Om, Kever, Tog, Gladmood, and Torgar. What do you do, Torgar? You see him freeze uh, like that look after he looks into the window. I'm gonna run at him and drag him, drag him back, forcefully. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you do that, um, and you drag him 
back away from that place. Uh, let's see, right there. Uh, what, what do you do, uh, Tog, while that's happening? Um, can I shoot into the window? <laughs> you, you know, like, something happened, so, yeah, you know, like, yeah. something weird happened. I just go, like, you know, shoot it. <laughs> that's sure. it. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you, you shoot into the window. Um, now, I'm going to give it a minus four, so you got some math to do, but uh, roll to hit, but with all your bonuses, minus four. Okay, I'm going to just throw the uh, d20 and that, the bonuses, that's it. Uh, and that my minus four, so it's twenty one. Twenty one. Uh, you. Uh, what, what are you firing? Like a bow? Uh, no, I have a crossbow. A crossbow. You, you put it in the window and you fire the crossbow. <laughs> and you hear uh, first human screams, but then the screams turn. The pitch turns at the end of the scream. So you hear like a, ah, ah, and then at the end of the scream, and there's like three or four of them. And you hear a wet plop as the crossbow bolt splashes into something. And you hear these screams, and then all four screams... Like it's like they come together in one wavelength and warble at the end, and you hear a like that as the, all the screams turn into one thing, and then you hear a uh, wet slapping noises as something is coming closer to the door. Um, I'm yeah, going to take out one of his flasks of uh, oil and use his tinder box to uh, get that ready for uh, ignition. Okay, you're gonna have that ready. Uh, you will get a surprise around, but uh, at this point, uh, the doors um, get ripped open, and uh, something rips its way out of the front of the building. It's not gonna fit actually out of the front of the building, um, but it basically rips the wall down in front of you, and. Um, and it makes these wet slapping noises and it sounds like bones and uh, flesh cracking and, and ripping as it moves. Every time it moves, it makes these noises. Um, and you all can roll for initiative. Nice. Am I paralyzed in some way? What's, if, or am I... You are paralyzed in some way. Okay. Geez, I'm two for two on being paralyzed in... <laughs> <laughs> you're you're very brave, uh, so just jump it in. Yeah, might as well, right? Um, because my VGT is down. Would you be bothered if I just rolled in bot commands? Oh, absolutely. You could do that. Uh, and if you could do me a favor and just let me know what you get. Looks like some people are still in the VTT. If you're not, go ahead and just roll a D10, either physical or use a dice roller or use Discord, please. And. Um, <laughs> Is, is initiative uh, modified by agility? No, it's just a d10. All right. So All right. Roll a d10. One d10 coming right up. Holy mama! I'm very glad I had that bot command. See, so I have proof. I rolled a ten. Nice. Okay, so we got Om at the top of the round. Uh, six. Uh, I've got a nine. Torgar got a six. Um, uh, Kever. Kever. Kever has got Kever's a nine. Got a nine. Uh, Tog. Six. Uh, all right. Uh, that is Tog. Got a a six as well. And then Gladmood. Oh, I didn't roll because I was paralyzed, but I will roll. I got a uh, a six as well. Six as well. Okay. Gladmood, and then the monster mercifully got a four. Okay, so Om, um, uh, so first thing is you get a surprise round, so you can chuck your, your flask. You can roll to hit to chuck the flask. With pleasure. My roll to hit will be plus three, so wish me luck. And I assume that's dexterity? Uh, yeah, dexterity. And then if it's a prime stat, plus six, plus your level. All right. Uh, plus your attack bonus. Well, my attack bonus altogether is uh, plus... Bonus hit is plus two, modifier is plus one. 
And then level as well. Nice. Yeah, just chuck a 20 though. You might get an add okay. 20. We'll see. <laughs> Alright, 4, add on 7. That's still gonna miss. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Now, that was a surprise round. You can you can attack again or do another move if you want. Well, what's coming out of there? What did I just throw in? Uh, yeah, that's right. You can't see the VTT. Let me describe. So all of a sudden, the front of the building bursts open as if uh, as if a womb it just some births this disgusting pile of uh, a combination of the various inside fl uh, fluids of various creatures. It looks like a... Um, blisters of pus and flesh, uh, all uh, swimming underneath uh, these blisters of flesh and pus are floating eyeballs and mouths that sometimes try to escape from the membranes. Uh, this thing is covered in membrane or uh, mouths and uh, tentacular inhuman tongues flip out of the uh, out of the mouths in places, bursting the blisters. This thing is probably 15 feet wide and probably you know, six feet tall. <clears throat> Are you sure we're uh, playing Castle Crusade, not Lamentations? <laughs> um, Alright, since, uh, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, Omrem's gonna take his golden tongue, walk on over, and slice that thing in. You walk right on over and slice. Roll to hit. Yep. And I just want to make sure I got this right. Um, prime record... Prime attribute strength, plus one modifier, plus two bonus to hit. Just roll um, a twenty, <laughs> okay. and then we'll see. All right, all right. Ooh, I th that might hit actually. Yeah, what'd you get? I rolled a five. Oh, okay, yeah, it might. Prime strength, so twelve. So plus one bonus, plus three to hit. That's eight, and then add on my level is three. That's still eleven. Okay. Yeah, and maybe write all that math down uh, between your turns here. But unfortunately, yes. You uh, describe your weapon. The, the... Um. Well, this is the first time I've ever heard of the weapon. Um, it's a uh, it's a big ten foot uh, pull arm. Okay, gotcha. Well, you take it and you you jab it into this uh, this pool of, uh, of inner f inside fluids uh, that are all bound together. It also looks like chunks of limbs and bones have been fused together within this mass and you burst one of these uh these pus pimples and it and it explodes but then you pull your pole arm out and it seems to just like swim together and form back together it seems to um you haven't done enough pain to this thing for it to matter and we're on to kever Oh boy, well, it doesn't look like uh, physical attacks are going to do much, but I'm going to take one anyway just because I'm right there. And uh, I'll, I'll, just to confirm, I suppose, I'm going to uh, try to attack it uh, with, with my boar spear. All right. I, it just, just, this is really just to confirm whether or not we're doing anything to it. So um, here we go. I'm betting that hits. It does hit. So, all right, you uh, uh, you strike in with your boar spear, uh, just as like one of these pimples is burst open by Om, and you come in with your boar spear as it's starting to reform, and you stab deep down into it. It goes halfway down your spear, and you have to like get onto both feet and pull it back out, and you hear a uh, a screech from this monster as it's as it's hurt roll for damage. All right. That's uh, D8 plus three. And you guys, you can always, if you're doing an attack, just roll a D20 plus your damage. And if it, if it doesn't damage, hey, you know. Um, you got any bonuses? Uh, that's uh, plus three. To, plus uh, three, so an eight. Yeah. Yeah, and you can actually see that this place is now, this, uh, this, Monsters ripped open in part of it now. Uh, Tor, or I'm sorry, Tog, what do you do? Um, I'm gonna try to shoot. Uh, I mean, I, I'm gonna try to aim at the same same place where it was ripped open. I'm gonna take my crossbow and I'm gonna try to um, uh, shoot in that place. All right. Okay. Let me see how it's gonna go.
Nice. I bet nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can always just roll your 20 in your damage. At this, you know, and then if you don't get to do the damage, whatever. So do, do you get like a modifier if you if you if you have a dexterity to to your? Uh... No, not for a mechanic damage? weapon. Yeah. Okay. Just one d6. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, you fire into it, and it and what it happens is the bolt that goes in this big gaping wound, and it seems to just disappear inside of this uh, cavernous, uh, you know, cavity of, the, of this creature. Uh, yeah. Torgar. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap into my primal, primal instinct. Uh, to get a plus four on physical uh, uh, actions, okay. and I'm going to charge at it. Oh, nice! A charge. You got it. Roll, roll the hit. Rip and tear, man. Um, uh, how much is this? Twenty, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven, uh, and it's not an at twenty, right? No. Okay, you uh, you hit. Roll for damage, and your plus two damage too. Uh, and, and, and damage is modified by strength? Uh, that is right. Yeah, you'll add your strength bonus. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. Uh, describe how you, like, I, I can't imagine any other way except for in the opening that they formed. You just, like, leap inside of the opening, maybe, and rip out the other end? Or are you, like... Do the anime thing and just hack it down the middle with your axe. I don't know. You tell me. No, right right in the opening. I jump and I just uh, uh, start <laughs> slashing. Uh, you, you do that. Um, and uh, you, uh, this thing stops making noises and it starts to evaporate. Uh, unfortunately, you hear, the gr you feel the ground shaking. A familiar... Familiar sound that it was making before. And uh, um, do it. Can, can we discern from 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 where where it's coming, like the direction? Yeah, it's coming uh, from behind you, from the direction of the river. Uh, I told you there there, there was supposed to be uh, some kind of uh, ogre or a giant for sure. Uh, maybe we should go inside the. The town hall and see if anyone survived. Unlikely, but we owe it to them, yes. I just hope we've not been followed this time. Alright, I'm gonna regroup you all, and then I'll put you in there. Uh, you you go inside of the uh, the town hall to check and see if there's anybody inside. Uh, you hear uh, yelling, mumbling from upstairs. Am I still paralyzed out in the... You, you wake up. Area? Yeah, okay. you wake up. What was I paralyzed from? What was the... Uh, Here, or? Yeah, when you looked at this thing, it had some kind of otherworldly effect on you, and uh, and yeah, and you you felt you were stunned. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. Go ahead. No, just my 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 my, my foundry no, no crashed as well. I I tried to um to, to uh, I thought like I'm I'm gonna anyway it doesn't matter yeah so I'm gonna be rolling in the Discord as well. Okay, all right. So um, you hear uh, at least one plaintive voice. Uh, you uh, you all rush upstairs to uh, to hear it, and you find um, a man cowering uh, on the second floor of this building. Uh, and then, just as you see him, unfortunately, the the ground shaking grows louder as a. Uh, and you can hear groaning, and you see some huge thing outside the windows of the building. It, uh, it's a humanoid. It towers ten feet tall. It has huge muscles, and, um, and one eye. The eye looks as if it has erupted from a, uh, a wound to the center of its face. And a, a large, upside-down, triangular mouth, like a frowning jowl with teeth that jut off you know, kind of randomly in different directions. It uh, looks like a cyclops! It does. Oh, I hate these things. 
They eat, they eat dwarves. <laughs> eat, eat, eat my grandmother. Oh no! And I just I'm already running down the stairs with my morning star out. It, probably your grandmother just just tried to leave the the, the underground. That's why it's hated. Uh, you should always stay underground. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? And I, I say as I'm running down the stairs. All right, you leave the uh, the the bedraggled um, man hidden behind a pile of furniture. Uh, Jay, um, that is glad mood. You rush back downstairs, uh, making it into the foyer that has been burst open. It's almost like it's been ripped outward, you know. And you've got the remains of the wood that's ripped out each, each side, and you uh, you rush out from that destruction into the open where this. 10 foot tall thing towers over you and when you get to it it just roars you know down in your face wads of spittle fly you know and hit onto your shoulder and, and the walls around you from its mouth I'm just running with my I have my morning star in both hands and I'm running under it I feel like this is kind of the, the, the natural enemy I mean we have uh, dwarves have plus 4 armor class against giants and ogres Nice. So this is like we. This is what we do. <laughs> we try to eat. It's my speciality. Exactly. Yeah, so like, and I, I duck under and I try to get under his head and then I smash at one of his shins with my morning star. All right. Roll, roll a dexterity check to see if uh, for surprise to see if this dwarf uh, charging toward it surprises. You can also charge if you want. Uh, it uh, is surprised. A nineteen. Yeah. So this is a free round uh, of combat. I'll get back to everybody else in a second. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'd like to just keep the same initiative, if that's okay. Uh, it benefits you all. It doesn't doesn't change anything. Okay. Yeah, rolled a uh, rolled a hit. Yeah, I've got plus ten. So that is a twenty. A twenty. Um, let's see here. Here it is. Uh, a 20 hits. Nice. Okay. Oops, I didn't roll my damage. So I do 8 max damage. Um, right in the shin. Yeah, nice. you, you, you slice open and, and uh, a gout of blood flies off past you as you, uh, you run through its legs and slice open one of its shins. It howls in pain. That was your surprise That's round. Grandmother. Oh, uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> nice. Back to anyone the... Else yeah, that was just a surprise round. I get, so back to the top of the round. You guys are still on the second floor. You can still move and act, don't worry. Um, um, on the second floor, you can see all this happen out of the window. You've got the man hidden behind the furniture. Everybody else is on the second floor. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to take out my sling, and I'm going to try and assist my buddies by and uh, earn back a little uh, dignity after failing to damage that creature okay. by fleeing the stone in its eye. You do However, that? from the second floor window yes okay go ahead uh, and i uh, also should mention i did take a quick peek at the um combat example i don't think that the level bonus and stuff is added onto that it's just strength and bonus to don't, hit. don't worry about it keep going just roll okay just roll gotcha when do you me coming right up Oh, don't oh, for Pete's sake. Dice roll is also acting up. <laughs> there we go. Um, lucky 11. Uh, an 11. Uh, and that is your total, or is that with the bonus? Uh, that is the um, that is the number on the die with you my... You got it. Okay, so you hit. Roll for damage. With pleasure. Two damage. Two damage. Okay. You, uh, you strike it in its eyes. It's hitting the shin, irritated. Um, and uh, let's see, Kever, what do you do? Um, so I wasn't aware, I guess, that we were all on the top floor or the second floor. But that's okay because I'm going to uh, charge this thing from the top floor. I'm going to dive <laughs> out the window, bore spear in hand, and aim for his eye. Mad respect. Yeah, you could definitely get a charge attack for that. All right. That's and that's a plus two to damage, right? All right yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Here's my uh, here's my attack. For parent fall, oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it um, 
Uh, That's a big 13. <laughs> you fall. <laughs> uh, roll d d6 for damage. You fall 10 feet. <laughs> One. You land in a mud puddle outside. I tuck and roll. Aaron <laughs> <laughs> fall needs better protectors. Uh, all right, uh, Tog. <laughs> Uh, and if you wanted to jump. not go to the top floor, that's okay. You can say you're on the bottom floor. It's up to you all. Uh, dog is gonna say, somebody better get that man. Uh, I'm gonna try to uh, make sure that that one's trust in, is blind. Uh, and I'm gonna go and from the second floor window is gonna shoot my Bianca into his eye. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's a miss. Uh, okay, uh, so I rolled three, and with 12, everything, it's fourteen. Okay. So I missed. Okay, uh, Torgar. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump down, while he's being attacked, and I'll go go. Um, I'll run to the back of this thing and hit it right on the calf. All right, yeah, you can move fast enough to get uh, an attack from behind to add two to your damage, yeah. What's that, 20? Uh, you got a 20, it hits. Yes. All right, how much damage? Eight damage. Eight damage. Uh, you also cut open a wound in a calf, uh, and it also howls. It seems to start to circle around. You notice that with its one big eye, it's, it's having trouble trying to see all these little critters underneath its feet as it tries to track one of you down and smash this giant club that it has down at you. You all are maneuvering down under its feet as it slams down into the mud puddles nearby you, almost crushing you as it circles. Um, glad mood. And Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, also, uh, a Turgar's gonna scream at him, You will fall as it, like the tree before you. Nice. Uh, nice. Gl glad mood. Yeah, just uh, grab it. Can I go to the other leg and smash its leg? I'm, I'm ducking underneath it, so... I'm trying to stay right underneath it where it's hard for it to find me. All right. And I get a... Uh, 13, I missed. 13 after my Ooh. plus 10. So All right. And that brings it to the monster's turn. Uh, Gladmood has especially angered this thing. Um, it's having trouble seeing you, though. It's going to try to make an attack. All right. Let's see. My armor class is 18 with the plus four. It's going to use its giant club at a minus two. Um, and uh, that is 16 minus two is 14. All right. It's a miss. It slams the giant club down mm. next to you as you uh, try to slash into its leg again. Um, and uh, narrowly missing you, and it's back to the top of the round with Om. All right. Um, might as well uh, do my adventuring duties and get down there. Uh, Ten-foot pull arm out. I'm going to take a running leap at the creature and try and jab it in. All right. We're just going full Greek epic here, people. <laughs> Quick I accent intended. Yeah. Let's do 13 it. plus. Yeah. Okay, 13. Yeah, I think that's going to hit. Roll for damage. Hacha. And you can add two. Oh, thank you. Just six damage, but that's still going to hurt him, at least. It does hurt. Um, and uh, you strike it uh, near, near its face, just as, and then leap off back to the muddy ground below um, as this thing circles around and tries to, to swatch you all like flies. Cover. Well, you, uh, I'm going to uh, duck roll out of the mud puddle, and uh, I'm going to try to slide under this, uh, taking a cue from uh, from Gladmule, as he knows how to fight giant, clearly. I'm going to try to roll under his legs and uh, thrust upward with my boar spear into his soft bits. Nice. Nice. Nice, that 24. Hits. Yeah, roll for damage. And the damage is going to be D8, but I also get uh, a plus 4 to it, actually. So. Is that a 12? That's an 8. 
So yeah, 12. Okay. Uh, describe how you slay this thing. Uh, like I said, roll underneath him, and as I uh, as I come, I'm a tiny guy, but as I come up, I'm gonna thrust my boar spear straight up at a 90 degree angle into his uh, soft bits below his kilt. All right, you you do that, uh, and um, it uh, finally uh, tumbles for a while, and then. Uh, just just like the tree, just like um, as uh, Torgar said, it whoo, and falls back behind it and slams into the muddy ground behind it dead. And both of the monsters that uh, um, had uh, changed thanks to the green skies have been slain. And uh, the village elder, the surviving village elder, Kale, comes out shakily. Uh, he smells unwashed and urine-soaked, uh, and he comes out shaking. He's like... Uh, I'm alive! I'm alive! I can't believe it! Hmm. You're safe now. What happened to these people? Something changed. The skies turned green. My friend, Hubert, his face swallowed his other eye, and then he, his bones malformed, and he turned into this thing when the skies turned green. And then there's that thing. I had barricaded myself into the town hall with people who had survived it. It would enter the windows and doors and slide in through cracks and pipes. And once it was in a house, people would simply stare at it as it devoured them. I thought I was done for. Well, you're safe now, but we've, we've got to get you back to the village. Well, it's almost, it's, it's getting dark. I don't know. I look at my friends here. Are, um, are you going to stay the night here or try to make it back? Um, just, just, you know, to be sure, is there any, any other monsters that you, you noticed around? Or that's it? I think that's it. And he looks around. You can see the, the village burning all around you. There is nothing left in this village. It's burned to the ground. And um, so we'll skip forward here. Uh, you make the most prudent choice, you know, whatever, whatever that is. Um, you are intelligent, brilliant, and uh, elite heroes and adventurers. So, you know, whether you decide to camp or return to the ruined keep, uh, you do so and you return uh, at first to disbelief. And then uh, you escort these villagers away from their, their ruined home to the... Um, to the nearest town of Yigsburg in the Eastern Vale. And um, here the people of Imisburg hail you as heroes. Um, and they make their plans from Yigsburg with the, uh, the, count the county's help uh, to, uh, to rebuild after winter has come. And you are swarmed in Yigsburg with adventuring contracts and the promise of gold. And they give you a hundred gold pieces. Um, Yes. Now, all in a day's work. It, it, at the tavern, the Green Dragon Inn in Yigsburg, uh, the survivors of Imisburg swarm up to you with uh, with all sorts of gifts. Let's see. Uh, Om, roll a d6 for your gift. Thank you. Uh, all right. And I'll just bump up and down duplicates. Two. A two. Uh, one is a minstrel. And, uh, and they perform a song for you on the spot, which the, the tavern tries to chime in and harmonize with. And it is a, a ballad of Om. And they sing a song in your honor. Uh, Kever, roll a d6. It's quite a lovely tune. I'm a little jealous. You could say <laughs> green with envy. No one liked that joke. <laughs> uh, Om will uh, smile and nod to you. Pull out his diggery do because he. I actually did purchase a diggery do. It's on the equipment list. Nice. I'll be a tune later for you. Um. <laughs> so for uh, for Kever, um, a wealthy landowner uh, is he? They know they their estate is just outside the village, and they think that you had saved its remains. And so, under obligation during a conversation that you have with the landowner, they offer you another fifty gold pieces and thanks. Uh, let's see, uh, Tog, roll a d6. Uh, 
Yeah, that's one. <laughs> a one? All right, I'm going to bump it. Well, actually, no, one. Uh, you receive all manner of praise from these people. Probably very uncomfortable for you. They just like, yeah. they're all humans. They just tower over you. They want to touch you uh, and hug you and shake your hands and stuff. And um, uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, they have I'm just nothing say to steal, like, you know? You, you know, like gold would be much more appreciated <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Torgar, roll a d6. Six. A six. All right. Um, uh, Torgar, uh, the surviving elder saw your mighty exploit where you ripped open and leapt into the, the wound of this, uh, this horrible creature and ripped it out from the other side, this powerful warrior, and how you danced lithely with your axe underneath the feet of the giant. And, um, and he recounts your stories, and, uh, and they sort of, you become a local legend on the spot. And uh, the, the villagers resolve to build a stone statue of you when they rebuild their town in the town square. And uh, let's see. Uh, Gladmood. I think I didn't get it. A. Two. Two. Okay, so I'll bump that up. Uh, Gladmood, um, you speak with uh, the surviving... Um, uh, merchants and wares peddlers um, among them and uh, they agree because the town is was ruled by a council of elders but the oldest people that survive in the town at this point are the merchants and wares peddlers and the owners of the marble mine and that is what has made Immisburg so wealthy was the marble mine and so they agree to bring you in on their deal and make you one of the town elders and a, uh, a co-owner of the marble mine. Well, that's a, that's, that's a great honor. Um, I, I, I accept. What can I do? Nice. All right. Where I've been and that's everybody, right? Okay. So, and, uh, and thus it is. Uh, so you have, you know, the, the people of Immisburg shower you with thanks and praise and what gifts and promises they can offer at the Green Dragon Inn, but then it's not long before many in the crowd at the at the inn begin to approach you with the adventures that they the needs that they have of adventures, and that's that's where uh, that's where it will end tonight. Mythic Mountains RPG is a private RPG play club that focuses on folk RPGs. Those of us that play folk RPGs are not beholden to rules masters on the internet from big corporations, nor anything other than that which we agree together works best for our table. We buy games from passionate, independent creators that are at the cutting edge of role-playing games. Castles and Crusades, as well as Shadows of a Green Sky, are by Trollord Games. Music is by Offhulker, Tabletop Audio, and Bruneville. Details for the music, RPGs, and adventure are included in the description. We hope you enjoyed our adventure, and we hope you'll join us next time in the Vale.